I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another one of our fibre unit videos. In this particular video we're going to be talking about the changes that happen in recycled fibre. So I hope you find it interesting. This is what we're talking about, recycled fibre. This looks like mixed waste, it could be anything. So what happens inside a fibre? That's what we want to talk about. Just before we move on, I'll just it's worth mentioning who are the largest users of recycled fibre. There are three sectors of the industry that are the largest users of reclaimed or recycled fibre. There's the newsprint industry. There's the tissue industry. And there's the packaging industry. And I think what you saw in that last picture was a good example of uh, packaging being recycled. Okay, so we're going to talk today about what happens to a fibre once it's been made or as it's being made into a sheet of paper. So this is a, a nice simple pictorial example of a fibre. So all fibres, all natural fibres, consist of these four walls. The outermost wall is known as the primary wall. And the primary wall has one or two layers of fibrils. Inside the primary wall is the secondary wall. And the secondary wall is divided into three areas. The outermost of those is known as the S1. And there, there are between four and six layers of fibrils. The S2 has the nickname the paper maker's layer because that's where almost all the cellulose is. So in the S2, there are between 30 and 150 layers of fibrils. And finally, we get to the S3. The S3 is really is exactly the same as the S1. There are somewhere between four and six layers of fibrils. If we turn that fibre on its end now, this is the sort of thing that we would see. So the green, very thin green band there would represent the primary wall. The white would represent a bit of a gap. It's not really a gap, it's just less dense with cellulose. So there, then we have the secondary wall, the S1, then another bit of gap, and then the big S2, the paper maker's layer, then a bit of a gap, and then finally the S3. So that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to sort of show you uh, what happens when we refine fibre and what happens when we dry fibre. And it's a bit difficult. I'm not a, a graphics person. It's a bit difficult for me to um, keep drawing circles. So what I'm going to do is to take a little slice out of this fiber and just show you what happens in that one slice. And then, of course, you can uh, imagine that it's happening to the whole fiber. So there's our slice. <clears throat> Here is our primary wall, then a the bit of a gap the S1 and a bit of a gap, the S2, a bit of a gap, and the S3. So let's go through the whole process. We see a tree in the forest, we chop it down. A tree is approximately, what, 50% water, something like that. Very quickly, before it gets a chance to dry out, we chop it down into little wood chips. We throw it into... Uh, a very harsh environment with some harsh chemicals, high temperatures, high pressures, several hours. We dissolve away all that lignin and we're left then with a chemical fibre ready to make paper. We bring it into the mill, we disperse it uh, and of course one of, the, one of the first things we're going to do is to do some work on it. We're going to refine it to get it better into the state for our final product. Now, when we refine fibres, we're doing three things to them. We're either 
cutting them to make them shorter or we're carrying out what we call external fibrillation which increases its surface area or we carry out internal fibrillation which pumps water in and makes the fibre swell and makes it more flexible and that's the aspect that we're going to talk about in this tutorial. So you can see here that after we've refined the fibre has got fatter and the reason why it's got fatter is we've damaged these layers, these four to six layers here, we've damaged these four to six layers here and we've definitely damaged these 30 to 150 layers here and in damaging them we've also forced water molecules in to open them up. In these gaps here we've pushed water there and the hydraulic pressure has made that gap even wider and if you look the primary wall has completely disappeared because in refining that's the first thing we must do we must destroy and remove the primary wall because it's a very holding wall so you've got to remove it destroy it so that we can push water in and make this fiber expand so the primary wall is a very constraining wall that we must eliminate so we push the water in we make the fibre swell, we mix it with a few other chemicals and then we shoot it out onto the wire, we make a piece of paper, it goes through the pressing section, it then goes through the drying section. Now what happens when it goes through the drying section, obviously, is it dries. So we remove all the water from around the fibre and then we start to remove the water from within the fibre. So just like pushing water in made the fibre swell and expand, removing water makes it shrink. So this gap here, as you can see, becomes smaller. That gap becomes smaller. This S3 wall has shrunk a little bit. The S2 has definitely shrunk. Everything's got closer together, more compact. The S1 has shrunk. What we need to do now is if we recycle that now for the first recycle, we throw it in a hydropulper and slush it. And what should happen, the fibre should absorb water. But because this gap is smaller and that gap is smaller and these have actually become these walls have become more dense. It's harder, <clears throat> pardon me. It's harder for the water to get in. So the fiber does not swell as much. So because it doesn't have as much water in it, it's not as flexible. So it becomes stiffer. What do we do then? We make a piece of paper out of it. And then when we come to recycle that piece of paper we've slushed it <coughs> we've put it in the paper making system slushed it turned a bit of paper out, out of it and in the drying process then these that gap will get even smaller this layer will get more dense and smaller these layers will get more dense and smaller and it's harder still to get water in so the fibre has become even stiffer. And then again, the third time we do it, exactly the same thing's happening. So every time we slush some recycled fibre, less water gets into it than last time. And every time we dry that recycled fibre, we make the fibre shrink that much more. The whole thing becomes denser. It becomes less flexible. And one of the problems with that, of course, is when you do slush these fibres, the less flexible they are, the less likely they are to flex. And therefore, the more likely they are to snap. So as well as making the fibre diameter come in, you'll also be cutting the fibres and making them smaller. And this is why, in theory, you can only recycle a fibre up to seven times. After that, it's too small to be of any value at all. 
So this is just an example of what's happening. We have our virgin fibre. It's very flexible. You've got lots of contact area here. When you recycle it and make another piece of paper, that fibre is now stiffer. So there's less contact area. So that means less bonding. So a weak piece of paper. And here's a second recycle. The fibre has become even stiffer. Less contact area. Less bonding. And so on. So I think that's about it. I think you, hopefully you understand now what happens to fibres. Knowing what happens to fibres, you can then formulate a strategy as to how to deal with it and how to get the best out of your recycle fibre. What you need to do is to counteract that shrinkage. So one strategy is to put something in that might make it swell. And this is why we commonly add highly alkaline materials, things like caustic soda or sodium carbonate. Those things will actually rejuvenate the fibres. It will make them swell. If they swell, you can get more water in, they become more flexible. You'll get a better piece of paper. OK, well, I think that's it for uh, this session. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please leave feedback as always. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in some future videos. Bye for now.